Hello everyone and welcome back to Hair and Now. Today I am absolutely thrilled to be sharing a big book archiving project that we've been working on over the last month or so. If you are one of my dedicated 980 subscribers here on YouTube, then perhaps you already know that I both research and practice a traditional Victorian era craft called hair work. In other words, I make artwork and jewelry out of human hair using what some may consider to be a dying art form. And if you aren't one of my dedicated 980 subscribers, why don't you give that subscribe button a little tap to help me break through that 1000 mark. Anyway, pressing on, a large part of my research over the last several years has involved tracking down texts from the 1800s that discuss this kind of work, many of which are rare and difficult to obtain. And Sure, sometimes I'm able to benefit from online archives to get this information I'm looking for, but even when I am able to find a good scan of a resource I want to read, sometimes the quality is just... not very good. <laughs> I have straight up had some situations where the only scan I have of an important document is in such fine print that you can't even read it and zooming in only makes it blurrier, which, which A, got me thinking that there's got to be a better way to scan antique books, and B, reminded me that I have a couple of antiques that I personally have never seen archived anywhere else. At least not free and publicly. There's always that. So with the help of my very supportive and tech-savvier-than-I spouse, we came up with a plan to fix that. Now, in a moment, I want to actually turn it over to Royce, who is going to show you our process, because it is easy, effective, and I know I am not the only private collector in the world with rare books, so we wanted a system that was easy to replicate should anyone else out there want to conserve their own historically significant collection for posterity. But before I turn it over, I want to give an important acknowledgement to my supporters over on Patreon. I do intend to post these documents as an extra reward there once they are ready, so please consider joining our community over there if you're interested in reading my book collection, at least the ones that are in the public domain, <laughs> and or you appreciate the work we're doing here. It really helps a lot, and I'm not even kidding when I say that we bought not only the equipment we used to scan these books with the funds from Patreon, but even some of the books themselves. At any rate, this is a very exciting day because you will get to see Royce's face for the first time on this channel. Although remaining largely in the background, Royce has actually been a very important part of this channel by editing many of the videos and even making small cameos here and there. Hats! Towels. Musical instruments. Hey, Royce. What? Can I turn you into necro pants when you die? Uh. So is that a yes or? Uh. I don't care. Yes. Step two. Wait for them to die. Hey, Royce. Are you dead yet? Afraid not. So now it is my pleasure to present to you Royce's optimizing brilliance and face. Take it away. Hello everyone. I've been working on a little archival project recently. The purpose is to take things like this and turn them into things like this while keeping the quality high and the cost low. So this is my setup. I have cradle to hold the book open in a position where it won't damage the spine. This could be anything really. I've seen people online take cardboard boxes and cut them in half at the right angle. I just happen to have a block of foam from a desktop computer case lying around and it's just about the right size. I have my cell phone to take pictures and I have a tripod and Bluetooth photo button to keep the camera stable while taking pictures. The lighting doesn't need to be too sophisticated, but you do need bright, even lighting over the page. 
Now, the photographing stage of this process is pretty simple. Just get everything lined up, click the button, flip the page, and repeat. When getting into a good rhythm, I've been able to do upwards of 12 pages a minute with this process, so it doesn't take very long to get through one half of the book and then turn the setup around to do the other half. Occasionally you may need to stop for a moment to adjust the book a little bit or adjust the camera stand to keep everything lined up correctly. And after doing this for a little bit, I'm going to move these files over to the computer for processing. The first step is to rename the images to match the pages. This will keep the files in order for building the PDF once you photograph the other side of the book. You can do this manually. There also might be tools out there to assist, but I wrote a script to do the job for me. After running it, you can see that the pages are named and sorted appropriately. With that done, we need to do some image correcting. For this, I'm going to be using Darktable. Darktable is an open source photography workflow application. It's free, and it's great for batch editing images. I'm going to open this one here and try to clean it up. I'll start by fixing the orientation, then applying a perspective transformation by clicking this little button down here. This analyzes the lines in the image and will distort it a little bit to try to align it with the camera lens. After that, I'll crop out the less useful parts of the image, then adjust the levels. By bringing the black point and the white point of the image in a bit, and then tweaking the midtones, we can significantly improve the contrast and legibility of the page. Once that's done for one image, I can go over here to save those transformations as a style. Then I'll back out to the main page, select everything except for the image I was just editing, and apply those same transformations to the rest of the images. And as you can see, the whole folder is much closer now. I am going to take the time to go in and adjust each image though. By reapplying the perspective transformation, moving the crop just a bit, and tweaking the levels, we can get each page looking really good without a lot of extra time. Once that's done, all that's left is to export the files. Down here at the bottom is the export tool. I'm going to select an output folder and set it to PNG for full quality lossless images. I'll back those up for future use. Then I'm going to change this to JPEG with a maximum size and quality settings to use in a PDF. And you can see here from the compressed JPEG output that the quality is still pretty good. We can still zoom in quite a bit and see all of the detail. Once again, I want to give a huge thank you to our supporters on Patreon. In addition to the antique book PDFs, which are on the way, we have a whole host of other rewards, including bonus content such as travel vlogs from the before times, where I show antique pieces of hair work that I have traveled to see bloopers for when I mess up and say silly things or do silly things in front of the camera, as well as bonus videos, blogs, movie nights, where I watch and react to history and or hair related movies. Uh, these are as diverse as Madeline Lost in Paris and bad hair. <laughs> And I even have video tutorials on how to make Victorian hair work because some of these resources are, as I said, hard to find, but even when you do find them, they can be a bit challenging to read. So I'm trying to make hair work education a little more accessible for those who want to learn. So on that note, thank you patrons, thank you Royce, and thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.